Hello everybody, in this video I want to show you how to clean up and consolidate a project ready for upload and then how to upload a project. So here I have my song and um, the song has a number of plugins on it, some of which are logic plugins, others uh, which are third party plugins. I've also got a sampler instrument here. So let's look at preparing some of these audio files first off. So in this case here, this kick drum has an EXS24 sampler on it. And I really need to render that so that the MIDI file becomes an audio file. And then I can bypass the ESX24. So if I was to solo that, go to file, bounce, regions in place. I get a drop down menu that says uh, bounce regions in place. I think I'll call it kick bounce. A new track so it'll pop a new track just underneath that one and it will mute that track. Do I want to bypass the effects? I have some effects and processing so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Include audio tail just in case I've got some reverb at the end here I might want to include include volume automa automation and pan, I don't have any and normalize, I always turn off so if I now go to OK so here's my bounced kick just below my sample kick so I can click on my sample kick I can bypass or remove the plugins and if I was to go to if I pressed H I can hide press H again and I can hide that track so just by pressing H, your hide function appears in the track header, click the H button, and away it goes. I could do the same to other tracks as well if I wanted to. So I could do it to this snare, and um, I've got two snares. So if I was to do it to this snare, I do the same thing, bounce regions in place. And I do the same thing. I'm not going to do it now because it takes too long, but I would get a new snare. And what I would do is I would bypass this snare. And I'd also bypass all the buses. And on the new snare, I would apply the buses because the buses don't get applied to the bounce. And I'd go through all tracks and look for third party plugins and I'd bounce them all out. Also if I've got edits like I've got here on the baritone I'd bounce it out just to make it one track. And once I've done all that and I'm happy with the mix and with my bounces I'd go up to my project window and I would go to edit, select unused and it would show me unused regions and if I was to go to delete it would delete them from the project another way to do that is over here where it says file and down to project management and clean up I can delete unused files here backups delete media browser files so this is, uh, I've got some WAV files that I'm not using. I'm no longer using the Acoustic Kick, which was the ESX24, which I rendered in place. And I'm no longer using, by the looks of it, an Impulse Response, a uh, Sound Designer Impulse Response. So I can delete, and some kicks, I can delete those. Again, back up to File and Project Management if I've got files that are not in my project folder so they're on other hard drives like samples for example I go to consolidate my project is on the desktop and consolidate will copy any files into that project audio ESX 24s and so on and that will just then bring that all into one space so I've deleted unused I've cleaned it up and I've consolidated the project now I might have um, alternatives, these things here, I haven't on this particular track but sometimes I have quite a few alternatives 
So if I do have different alternatives, uh, and I've got, let's say, um, audio that doesn't appear in here, but appears in the alternative, that won't be deleted. That will still be kept within the session or the project. So now, if I wanted to take this mix and disregard the other alternatives, if I go to File and down to Alternatives, there's a new function which says Export Alternative as Project. And what that does is just take these audio files and create a new project. So um, name it, tag it, choose where you want it to go, organize my project as a package, copy the following projects. I tick all except movies unless I need it. Go to save, or I don't want to replace it because I just put a one at the end. And that now will take that information, copy it into a new project. It should really now get the file size down to something quite reasonable. And um, the more the more projects you have, the more alternatives you have, should I say, then the greater the chance of a project being much larger. So what that means is that when I upload and try to share the project, it's going to take much longer to upload and download. So there's my project. Let's just have a quick look at the file size. I let it think about it. So that's that's a decent file size, 700 meg. Let's have a look at the other one. Let's see if that's much different. No, oh, it's exactly the same. Because that's because I've got no alternatives. So what I would do is just um, close the project. This one, the one that I've been using. Here's my alternative. Just open up that alternative just to make sure that everything loads and that there's there's no missing audio files and that um, it's going to download the other end as I intended to. So I've obviously still got some third-party plugins here because I haven't rendered all the files. Oh and incidentally I do the same for reverbs as well so I'll bounce out reverbs and I'll have the reverbs on separate tracks as well. So any uh, parallel compression and reverbs, which I'll show you now. So usually right over this side of the project. So all these buses, there's um, a plate reverb. So I'd solo that. This time I'd go to bounce and I'd bounce that out. And I'd create a pro uh, file out of that as well, just in case I didn't have that lexicon reverb. At the other end. If I want to comment on any of these tracks I can of course do so. If I click this notepad up here in the browser I can comment on the whole project and the tracks will apply comments to that track only. So here's track 1 and if I go to track 2 should be able to yeah there you go so if you have rendered files in logic so if you let's say if I've applied that distortion to that snare in here I can comment I can talk about why I did that what was the purpose of the application what was the sound that I was going for and even down to the settings that I used uh, so I can put in as much detail as I want obviously can't use screenshots in here because I can only upload text but I can certainly include web links and um, re uh, listening and reading references in here so I can actually include as much information as, as I need to and I can do that on any track so usually I suggest to students that where they've applied or even when they haven't applied but where they have plugins used that, that they could comment here on why they did that and what, what sort of sound they were after Another way of saving a project is to go to File, Save Copy As, and again you get this similar window to the Save Alternative have, As, but the Save Copy As will obviously take all the files even if there's different alternatives. So to create a smaller project it would be the best, best way to do it in Logic is go to Save Alternative, Export Alternative as Project. 
Once I've done that, and I've opened it and checked it, if I need any other files to go in with that project, I can I can attach those too. So I'm just going to take this project and I'm going to compress it. That will compress. So the zip has brought that down to 500 megs from 700. So once it's zip, zipped, if you just click on it, and then you can give it your student number and upload it. Now at the moment, uh, turn it in, Blackboard and turn it in. Don't handle large file uploads. They only handle Word documents and small up, small file uploads. So on my website, I've created on the front page, I created a student file drop. If you click that, you'll go through to this window when it gets there. There it is. There's some basic instructions, just what I've told you really. You just drag the file onto the upload window and then start uploading files. You can add a description so you can put your student number in again or whatever you deem um, relevant. I'll press OK and that'll start uploading so leave the window open. Say that it's uploaded. So uh, my advice would be just to screenshot that just as a receipt. At my end, this is my media fire window, student file drop. The files just drop in here and I get the date and the timestamp with it. And I also get a notification to say that I've received the file. So if it hasn't completed uploading for whatever reason, then um, I won't get it here and I won't get the notification. And like I said, best to screenshot your upload just uh, to be sure that it's uploaded okay.